Hi, this is Cooper, and today we're going to be learning about some machine learning, which is learning about machines learning stuff. So there's a lot of confusion about what ML actually is. Even in the ML community, it's a little bit debated, but in basic, uh, we have AI here, right? These are all the AI algorithms and solutions that we use, and we can think of ML as a subsection of AI. It's a more niche approach to making AI. You can sort of think of it as uh, ML being related to AI the same way squares are to rectangles. It's an example of it, but it does not make up all of it. Or you could think of it as what bones are to people. Kind of an integral part, I suppose. Um, so well, let's talk more specifically about what it actually is, though. So ML, in general, is using data to create a model that will perform some sort of function. So we can think of taking some like input, which we have as our data, being put into our model, and our output will give us some, uh, some value from our model. And we think of our model being a black box right now. So essentially, we're giving it inputs, and it's giving outputs, and we don't really need to think too much about what's going on inside. Um, we're definitely going to think about what's inside, but we can just think of it as some function. All right. So let's talk about how, we, uh, how we're going to look at our data. So we're going to think of all of our inputs, uh, we're going to call them x as all of our inputs. And we're going to use this notation, which we're going to continue to use in other uh, pre-recorded lectures. And we can think of it as x1, x2, x all the way up to xn, when there are n pieces of data. We're going to use this notation, um, and it will make more sense later on why we use this notation. Um, but this was going to indicate uh, which piece of data we're using. So if we have like n pieces of data, this would be the first, this would be the second, this would be the nth. And similarly, for all the labels, which is the expected outputs from our, uh, from what we what we want to output in uh, from our function, we'll label them similarly as y with the uh, with the with a one, two, and n. All right. So given some x to the q, some uh, qth piece of data, we want to take this uh, qth input and get this yth output, and we want to have that happen for every single one of the pieces of data. All right, so you can think of it as inputting our xq into the model and getting uh, yq. All right, so let's look at an example of doing this, right? So let's say that we have these inputs, just these numbers, 1, 5, 8, 2, 3, and we have the corresponding labels uh, as 3, 11, 17, 5, and 7. And we can think just like, as us, not having our model do anything yet, um, given this data, what function should we have our model perform? You know, if we input these... Uh, we want to get these out in the same order. So we want 1 to give 3, we want 5 to give 11, and so on. So what function do we want? And I'll give you a second to pause and just figure it out for yourself. It's a pretty simple function, um, but if you didn't pause, or if you did pause, the answer is uh, y equals 2x plus 1. All right? So it's very simple. You can check it yourself. I believe in you. And we can see, like, that's very easy for us to do, but how do we make a model do this? And like, what even is our model? And uh, good question. As you'll see, we're going to talk about a model. So our model is going to be some structure. Uh, there's a lot of variation in the types of structures we use. Um, one example that you have heard about, I'm sure, is a neural network. And we will be getting there eventually, just not quite yet. And this structure will have some parameters that it will use to perform a function, right? To calculate what the output is. So we can think of it as uh, like, using our data. So we're going to use our data to change our parameters so that the model will perform the correct function. That's essentially what we're doing. Uh, and this gets a bit more complicated as we go, but in these basic examples you'll see that it makes a lot of sense uh, what we're doing. All right, so let's look at an example model. Um, let's look at this one, which is of the same form as the solution we had earlier, which is y equals wx plus b. And in this situation, we have both w and b are parameters, so we can change both w and b to get the correct function out of here. And we're going to be using our like whatever method we choose to update these to make this function work correctly. So in our example, you know that w should be 2 and b should be 1 because our function is y equals 2x plus 1. So we have to find some way that we can actually find these values and put them into this, this model correctly so that we get our output. Um, and finding the parameters uh, like in this exact example, having y equals wx plus b is called linear regression. So we're going to be regressing uh, 
we're going to be doing regression and only finding a linear function. So if you ever hear, hear the term linear regression, I know it's getting cut off by my face over here, but if you ever hear of linear regression, um, this is what we're doing, is we're finding this W value and this B value to fit to our data. All right. So let's look at a harder example, and this will give you a little bit of an idea of the flexibility of what our models can actually look like. So imagine our model is the following. It is uh, y equals w1x plus w2x squared plus b. And you can see uh, very easily that this is not a linear function. We have our exponent right there. And I'm going to have you look at this and try to figure out the best way that you can to uh, look at the following data. We have these inputs and these outputs uh, corresponding to each other. So one corresponds to five and so on. And I want you to like pause the video and try to actually solve for W1, W2, and B. And maybe along the way you'll strike some avenue to solve this problem quickly. Uh, most likely not. Uh, but we can think about this and then in the next video we're actually going to tackle how we solve this and what like realer problems will end up looking like. And for anyone who wants to know the solution, um, the solutions are right here. So you can check it yourself. Um, I might have made a slight mistake, but I intended it for to, to be these. Um, and uh, I hope that all made sense. And in the next video, we'll be talking about more real uh, data. So see you there.